ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Future Quake Show. I'm Dr. Future. And I am Tom Bionic. And uh, it's time every week when we uh, do our review of the news. Yeah, um, and you know, I would like to point out that we have a special guest here in the studio with us today. Yeah, we, we don't normally point him out, do we? No, Here no, in the Future Quake yeah. Studios? We have him here today. We have uh, uh, Dr. Future's lap dog, Pyro, with us. He's not a lap dog. He just happens to be in the lap. He is sitting in your lap, and he's only about four inches high. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe, okay, foot high. I, uh-huh. think, that, I think that qualifies as a lap dog. Lap dog applies mostly to political candidates and figures. I'm not calling him a right. political dog. Yeah, yeah, he's not running for he's not running for anything as far yeah. as I know. Pyro is offended by what you said. That would apply mostly to figures who are trying to kiss <laughs> up for money or influence. Oh, All he geez. wants is a comfortable place to sit down during the recording of he tomorrow's is a dog. Tremors. All right, I'll amend it. I'm sorry, Pyro. Here, let me pet you a little bit. There you go. So here we are in Future Quake Studios for this week's Tomorrow's Tremors or today's review of the Future's News. Mm-hmm. And we've got some stories, hopefully maybe some unique ones that you haven't had a chance to catch that uh, may have some kind of prophetic influence or something we think maybe you need to know about. And we're always interested in your comments. Uh, later, Merv will... Uh, Remind you again about how to contact us, but just let me say early here, uh, Dr. Future, D-R-F-U-T-U-R-E at futurequake.com, Dr. Future, futurequake.com. Let us know what you think about our stories, if you have any comments on them or other things we should talk about. Um, and also I'd like to say, too, that uh, we'll be providing some opinions in here. You may or may not agree with them. They'll be a little different probably than things you hear elsewhere. Uh, often, Tom and I don't agree, right, with things that this we say true. or we sort this of work stuff out. We, we sort of expect everybody to do a little bit of their own Mm-hmm. discerning you know yeah yeah we we struggle things between he and i here uh, anyway and my opinions have changed radically over the last few years it's been quite a journey for me so i'm assuming that's true for all of us but this is a, a time of open discourse and a time where we can mm-hmm. maybe look at some things from a different viewpoint than what you often hear on christian radio at least provide food for thought we appreciate you uh bearing with us in Christian love, and uh, if you disagree with what we say, uh, provide a good, eloquent response back and, and give us some consideration, and uh, if you say it's okay, we'll read your email on the air. Try to exercise uh, a process of suspending your immediate judgment until you have time to ponder. Uh, like the Indians used to say, uh, don't judge a person until you walk a mile in their moccasins. I don't know if they actually said that, but okay. We'll, we'll hold, go with it. We'll focus on Scripture most of the time. I won't do it on, on old, tired Indian bromides. Yeah, but, there, uh, I hope you know. so. All right, here we go. Um, this is from The Independent, which is a U.K. newspaper. Uh, it, the title is, An Ominous Warning That the Rapid Rise in Oil Prices Has Only Just Begun. Uh, it's written by Danny Forstein, Force, Fortson. Excuse me. I don't know what's going on with me this morning. The chief executive of the world's largest energy company has issued the most dire warning yet about the soaring price of oil, predicting that it will hit $250 per barrel in the foreseeable future. The forecast from Alexei Miller. Now, how's that for an easy Russian name? Alexei Miller. You got off easy this time. Um, um, you praise the Lord on that one. Yeah, I'll get the demigity, demigity, demigity. Okay. The head of the Kremlin-owned gas giant Gazprom would herald the arrival of $250 per liter petrol and send shockwaves throughout the economy. His comments were the most stark to be expressed by an industry executive. Now, let me interrupt you. $2 per liter. Some of our listeners are going, huh? What is that in dollars per gallon? Not a clue. You're the, you're the mathematician. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking that's close to being on the order of, I think it's 3.76 liters per gallon, I believe. So it's getting up there toward... Uh, I, it would be about seven and a half dollars. I was going to say, yeah, about eight dollars a gallon, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, seven point f- uh, five two. There you go. There you go. Uh, his comments. Uh, blah, blah blah blah. Where was I? Now you made me lose my place here. Well, and people would like to know what you're talking about. You know, you could have said like two drams per bushel. Yeah, e fall <laughs> worth of gasoline. Or exactly. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> You're right. I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. We'll send out conversion kits for anyone who'd like to have it in our <laughs> audience at home. There's a little thumb wheel you can slide along. Yeah, yeah, there you go. We, you we go. try to use SI units as yeah. best as we can in future quick. And we could do it like in the real and the, the you know, the real and uh, gold and just silver. That's what we could do in this, in this conversion kit. You know, how much gold is it going to take to fill up my tank? Yeah, but it would have to be updated up late to the satellite where it perpetually changes. Well, no, changes. you're the technical guy here. 
Uh, you're the technical guy. That's, that's Oh, that's department. the easy part for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm the idea man yeah, here. Yeah, you see our first class studio here. That tells you <laughs> how good I am on electronic communications. It is cool. We've got a lap dog. Okay, tell us a, All uh, right. the story. Mr. Miller's predictions prediction is well beyond even the most heady market forecasts, the most extreme of which uh, fall between $150 and $200 per barrel and was explained only by vague references to demand from the developing world. It nonetheless stoked an already f febrile atmosphere of growing public anger across Europe over a soaring fuel cost that is wreaking havoc at nearly every level of the economy. The British government was urging motorists yesterday not to panic. Buy petrol in anticipation of a strike on Friday by lorry drivers who deliver petrol for four, four courts by Royal Dutch Shell, assuring motorists that contingency plans would ensure sufficient supplies. In Spain, the regional government of Catalonia enacted an emergency action plan to bring in fresh food and fuel supplies after nearly half of its forecourts ran dry and supermarket shelves were left bare. The situation was the result of the second day of an indefinite nationwide strike staged by lorry drivers in Spain seeking their government's help to contain the, effect of, the effects of expensive petrol. Scattering protests by drivers and fishermen in France and Portugal also continued yesterday. In a speech to the European Business Congress of Duval, Duville, France, Mr. Miller offered little prospect of relief. He warned that the world was experience a fun, experiencing a fundamental shift in energy prices that will end at a radically new level. We expect that the oil price will approach $250 per barrel in the foreseeable future. Philip Shaw, an economist at Investec Securities, warned that oil at that level would exert an extraordinary drag on the economy at a time when it already is decelerating at a rapid rate. The word is out, she said. Forecasts are forecasts, though, and I think it should be treated with some level of skepticism. The most visible result of the $250 oil would be, the, be at the petrol pump, which is already at, record, at a record 116.9 pence per liters of unleaded. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> which is, you know... Uh, it's almost dollars. a farthing. <laughs> In a fortnight, it could go up. I'm just reading the story. It's uh -huh. from the UK. Yeah, 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 yeah. You might want to get your units worked out before you haul that in front of our listeners. Well, I don't need to tell them how much gas is, exp how expensive gas is. Okay, now I'm you're pretty, finished. I'm pretty sure they know how much gas is. Okay, then you're done. All right. The price of everything from food to energy would see significant price rises. Household electricity and gas bills are particularly vulnerable. I had thought of that. Power companies have begun warning of a second round of major tariff increases for household bills this year that they say they will need to push through just to break even. Mr. Miller placed some of the blame on financial speculators for oil, oil's price rise. It is more than doubled in the past year, but said that the primary reason is simply supply and demand, driven by the rapidly expanding countries of the developing world, principally China and India. It is a view shared by the International Energy Agency. In its monthly oil report, the, developments, the developed world's energy watchdog said yesterday that the abnormally high prices are largely explained by fundamentals, but whether the price of oil will reach $250 is uncertain at best. Most expect it to reach a breaking point between that figure. The IEA, the IEA said that the high price would eventually choke off demand and a balance between supply and demand would return. What is certain is that for Europe, Mr. Miller's role will become increasingly important as head of the continent's single biggest gas supplier. He also warned against protectionist tendencies in Europe, where worries have grown that the company is being used as a blunt negotiating tool of the Kremlin. He says, The relationship between Gazprom and the Europeans is one of mutual dependence. We rely as much on European consumers as they, d as they depend on us. In all frankness, I am concerned about certain protectionist tendencies resurfacing in the EU. How wise it is that the European Commission invents an anti-Gazprom clause to keep investments which are so needed for more, more efficient satisfaction of raising demand.